Hi everyone, Greg Phelps here, uh, and I'd like to continue the presentation of some of the best practices when developing reports using Power BI. Uh, as I mentioned in the first video of this series, through my own Power BI learning over the past few years, I've consumed many online resources which have been instrumental, but I quickly became overwhelmed by content, and I ended up making my own notes. Uh, I wanted to collapse those notes into easy-to-digest PowerPoint files, and I'd like to take this opportunity to present Volume 2. Uh, this presentation will be available to Enterprise DNA members in the near future, where hopefully it will be useful to others. Uh, this is by no means an exhaustive list or even the top practices, merely some of the ones that I've incorporated into my own development. I have discussed this topic with other Power BI users to get their input, but again, these are my own takeaways. Also, uh, the best practices will evolve over time as new and enhanced capabilities are introduced in the Power BI application and also by the Power BI community. So let's move on to the first, um, first slide here. Uh, so once again, the four pillars, um, as per the teachings of the Power BI community in general and Enterprise DNA family in particular, uh, are data loading and transformations, data modeling, DAX calculations, and reports and visualizations. Uh, to this, I've added kind of a pre-pillar for setup items and that can be done before starting your development effort. Uh, in this series, I'm kind of taking one pillar at a time and presenting some of the best, best practices, hopefully uh, at the cadence of about one pillar per month. Uh, I did present the first pillar, data loading and transformation, plus select pre-pillar setup items in the first video of this series. And there's a link down below in the description to the first video. Uh, and here, without any further ado, are my selected best practices for the second pillar, data modeling. So the first thing I'd like to do is uh, talk about the benefits of a star schema. Uh, this is one of the best ways to set up a data model and it gets its name from the fact that it resembles a star with a fact table at the center of the star and the dimension or lookup tables at the points of the star. And let's quickly uh, jump over to Power BI here. And where are we going? Here we go to the, uh, sorry, we'll come back here. I want to collapse all of these first so we got more room. And then we'll go to the model view and we'll look at the star schema page. I'll collapse these as well. So there we go. Uh, you can see that the fact table is located at the center and the various uh, dimension tables are located uh, around it, kind of at the points of the star, if you will. Um, the data model does not have to look like a star uh, to still be using a star schema. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, best ways to visualize a data model is with the waterfall kind of approach. Uh, here, we arrange our dimension or lookup tables on top and our value or fact tables below. Uh, it's easy to visualize the relationships kind of falling to the, to the fact table. Um, and again, my best practice is to delete any relationships that might have been automatically generated by Power BI and I manually recreate all relationships. And I use the, the uh, Manage Relationships dialog to maintain the relationships. Uh, I find it easier to uh, display um, all the various components of a relationship. So anyway, here we go. Uh, again, continuing the waterfall layout, uh, as well as having um, lookup tables on top and measure tables in the middle, uh, as well I group, uh, sorry, or sorry, fact tables in the middle. I also group uh, measure tables over to the right in a column. Um, and then I also group supporting tables uh, in rows at the bottom left. Uh, so when using the Manage Relationships dialog, uh, you are presented with the full list of relationships and you can see all the from and to tables and columns and it's easy to spot incorrect keys uh, that are being used to join tables. Uh, as well, uh, the state of each relationship is presented and you can activate or inactivate relationships as necessary. Let's just flip over to Power BI and have a look at that. So if we go to the model view and we go to the manage relationships uh, dialog, uh, here we can go and we can activate 
uh, well actually we can't do two uh, active relationships between the same two tables so what we need to do is inactivate uh, the relationship to invoice date and activate the relationship to order date uh, before we're allowed to, to, to close it. Uh, when using the edit relationship dialog it's easy to see not only the tables and columns that will be used for the relationships but also the cardinality uh, and its direction. Uh, ideally your relationships will be of a one-to-many or many-to-one cardinality and Power BI is excellent at defaulting the cardinality correctly according to your data. Um, so let's go to uh, the edit relationship dialog. Here we see the relationship between sales and channels and so on. If we come across here, Power BI has picked up, where is it, the channel key uh, as being the, the join, a possible join between the two tables. You can verify that that's it here. Uh, you can choose your cardinality, make sure it's in the right direction, right uh, number, and make sure that your cross filter direction is either uh, single or both, depending on your data model. Um, care should be taken, however. Um, Power BI will most often choose single, uh, but in some cases will choose both. When you see both defaulted, take a moment to confirm that the data in your data set is loaded and transformed as intended. Uh, and switch this back to single if possible. There certainly are instances where cross filter direction of both is correct, uh, but a discussion of the characteristics of those instances is kind of beyond the scope of this presentation. Uh, there are many excellent resources available online that can be referenced when deciding the applicability of the cross filter direction uh, to your particular situation. The next thing to talk about about relationships are the preference for one-to-many relationships um, as much as possible. You can see these uh, are denoted by a single arrowhead uh, from uh, the one table to the many table and one wants to avoid bidirectional relationships uh, which is also called by die um, and can be denoted in the model view by seeing uh, double directional arrowheads. Uh, please avoid these unless absolutely necessary. Uh, Bidirectional relationships can lead to inconsistent results and often do uh, require more complicated DACs. Next thing to talk about is the uh, active and inactive relationships between tables. Uh, you can have only one active relationship between two related tables. Uh, but you can have as many uh, inactive relationships as you want between those tables. Um, you can use an inactive relationship on demand in DAX measures using the uh, use relationship command. Um, and let's flip over. Whoops, here we go. Uh, where are we here? So manage relationships. And again, actually we showed this before, so I don't need to do it again. Uh, you can if you go and try and put uh, an activator relationship that already hit, where there is already an active one, you will have to inactivate the relationship first, and then you can do that. Uh, you can add measure tables by choosing enter data from the home menu. Um, you can give the table a meaningful name. Uh, I'm just going to try something here, and you can see table has been created. Uh, sorry, I already had one called core measures, so it gave me a second one, core measure two, and the table was created with a default uh, column. Uh, once you've added a measure to this table, which I'll right click and add a measure, uh, just very quickly, once I have that measure added to the table, I can then delete or hide the uh, column that's there. If I collapse and expand the fields pane, you'll now see that that table uh, appears at the top of the, uh, the field look. Uh, with respect to linking columns, uh, my personal preference is to use the suffix key on any column that will be used for linking. If a column ends with ID or with code, uh, I'm always wary of these columns as they may mean different things in different tables. So I try to avoid these columns. 
Uh, further, I try to only link columns that are of exactly the same name, for example, customer key. When I'm doing my data loading and data transformation work, uh, one step is to always ensure that all fields that will be used for linking have the key suffix and that they are of the correct data type. Uh, I try to use integers. Uh, this is left over from my days doing data warehouse work. I suppose where linking by integers was always the fastest method. I'm not exactly sure how the tabular data warehouse behind Power BI uh, operates, but I still do it anyway as a best practice. Uh, the last thing I'd like to talk about is column visibility. Um, if you're going to be the only person using your Power BI reports, then column visibility is not such a big thing. Uh, but if you are going to be publishing uh, a report or a data set for use by others, it's a good idea to help the users uh, select the correct measures for the visuals uh, by hiding all columns that are necessary in the model, but uh, not in visuals. Uh, including keys, sorts, and any columns that will be used only by a DAX. Uh, hidden columns will appear grayed out. Let's just flip over to Power BI here. Uh, so let's just take a quick look at this. If I expand the sales table, we can see that many of the columns are already grayed out. Um, those are hidden columns, and I can uh, right-click on the whole field pane and choose not to view things. I don't see them at all. Uh, let's just have an example of hiding here. If I go to the aging groups table, um, I want to uh, select one column, right click on it, I can choose hide. You can see it come, actually, uh, if I had view hidden showed on, you'd see it becomes grayed out. Now, once again, if I hide the minimum, that goes away, and if I hide the maximum, that goes away. Now, if I turn off view hidden, there's only one possible thing that the user can uh, select. So that's it. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, the third and fourth pillars of Power BI development, uh, DAX calculations and reports and visualizations will be presented in subsequent volumes. Bye. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.